It's October 8th, 2021. I am Sonatina, and this is Linguistics You Can Use. Welcome to the season finale. Woo! Yes, can you believe it? 19 episodes of linguistic conversation of various lengths, technical quality, to look back on and enjoy in perpetuity. Ah, uh, brings a tear to one's eye. We will be back in January with more linguistics you can use. So fear not, the live conversation about language and how we uh, think about this uh, wacky communication style, we will, we will return. No worries. And keep an eye out. Just because the live streams won't be around doesn't mean there won't be some videos popping up on the channel. There's been a few things baking in the background, and I hope you enjoy some old favorites returning, perhaps. So, for now, we will be turning our linguistic focus to a conversation about auditory perception. Yes, we are all gonna go a researching. So let us fade into a new setting. So here you see we have some a Wikipedia page, basically. So today, our goal is basically to go on a little journey, as I said, about how do we research a particular topic. Um, this morning, uh, I was figuring out what exactly I wanted to discuss on today's uh, show, and the mm, sounds of my environment inspired me to look up a couple of uh, terms about what, how we, how we perceive sound, right? So I was curious, um, returning to my um, autistic perspective, you know, as they say, there's many, um, there's much, um, what is it, research or um, there's a lot of uh, evidence and self-knowledge, honestly, that sound has different impacts on different people, right? And I have mentioned this before on the show, there is certain there are certain terms, there are certain places that I can't really go easily because the cacophony, right? The ambient noise is such a, uh, melange of noise that I just can't function very well in those spaces. And so I avoid some of those spaces and it can have an impact on my social life, which is sad, but you know, that is life. Sometimes we have limitations that we must deal with, and so we choose to do other things. Hopefully there are other things that we can do. That's the, that's the key, right? So I happen to be fortunate to been able to design my life such that I live in the center of a city, so I can almost always do something else. If, the thing that I want to do primarily. Oh, oh, come on. It's my camera being, oh, my camera. Okay, it's back. Camera's being silly. Okay, so as I was saying, the this aspect doesn't impact me so very much, but it is impactful. And so I began to, you know, think, well, what about, what is this? What are the technical what are what is the research field currently in this area of sound 
and meaning. You know, where do those two areas of my particular uh, focus, where do those come together? And sound, you know, auditory, the auditory sensation and meaning Otherwise, you can put perception, right, in meaning, that category, because what we perceive is how we create meaning, right? So auditory perception, which is the page we are currently looking at on our lovely uh, Wikipedia. Oh, I can, it is right here. There. I, you know, the, if you go, if you do go and read back, oh, watch, read back, watch back through some of the old other live streams, you'll see how we I have developed this style of um, communicating with you in this way. It's an it's a it's a learning process, and I'm and I started it and I started before I knew what I was doing, so that I could just learn on the job. Right, that is I feel the best way. We it's really hard to learn ad abstractly. So you joined me on the journey to discover my live streaming style. Congratulations. And I do have to say, I'm very appreciative of those of you who have joined me through these weeks of uh, exploration. It's been fun, eh? So last week I talked a lot about um, my the name of this channel, Crafting Sound Meaning, and how it sort of came about and why I chose that name and how I crafted that name, as it were. Um, and if you're not a fan of puns, I'm sorry, you might not be a fan of me. I'm just going to be straight up with you like that because, yeah, that's just, I really do love puns. So um, I talked last week about a lot of crafting, you know, crafting. And so this week I was thinking, okay, well, let's see. Let's... It's the season finale. I unfortunately have another... Um, I have another obligation that I must attend to um, that will take up my Friday mornings through the end of the year. So I will un be unable to, as I said, be doing these. Uh, uh, but no fears. We are, we are marching forward. And um, so, yes, today I wanted to talk about, you know, the combination of sound meaning as a sort of second part from last week's episode and the way that we perceive our auditory sensation is just you know it's been it's been bubbling up in my mind all week right I, I mentioned this morning right I do a lot of my writing notes for the live streams the morning right before this because to me live streams should be somewhat spontaneous we're live but you want to have a guide so I generally throughout the week and thinking, okay, what's the theme going to be? And I'm doing a little, you know, thinking and maybe some, maybe some great notes, you know, like even one word or maybe a sentence of like, oh, this would might be fun to talk about. And then the morning of, I am like, okay, breakfast is done. Let us put some music on and prepare for the show. So that's what we're, we're doing today, basically, a little bit of a, you know, how do I prepare, right? I wanted to bring you behind the scenes as sort of a special for the, the season finale. And um, so that's why we are currently looking at the auditory perception page of Wikipedia. Like many, many uh, researchers these days, academics and all sorts of people, Wikipedia is generally the place where we start, not end, right, but just start, because it is a good way to sort of um, frame the idea. And that brings up its own sort of issues, which we can discuss and we likely will discuss in a future time. But today we're just going to sort of go through the process. Um, and then if you have any questions about the process, feel free to ask, by the way, chat type ask questions as I go, um, or send me questions through the contact email in the description box. And so here, as I said, is how I start my research project. And 
we, I just go down and I think, okay, so what exactly are the things on this list that connect to what I'm really curious about at this point in time? Um, so today my focus was on the combination, right? How does the, the sensation of sounds, the physical, you know, sound waves and individual and individual's brain process, processing my brain, right? Those mixtures, right? There are certain people that have sensitivities to certain sound waves, sound patterns, all of those things. So the things that popped out to me, as we see on this page, and I've already opened them, uh, neur neuronal, neuronal encoding of sound, right? So neuro, obvious, that just popped out at me because uh, the neurons, right, the brain is, that is immediately what I was thinking of in terms of like, yes, how does our brain encode sound? So that was like, I mean, okay, we're, we're opening that in a new tab. It's already opened a new tab, so I'm not gonna open a new one. But then we also have this phonophobia and, um, as you see, one of the great things about Wikipedia is now they are giving a uh, little snippet. You can hover over it before you click on it. So you might not, you know, is this is this the actual thing I want to click on and load in case you have a low bandwidth, you know, connections. So um, this is also obviously one of the things that I was interested in uh, related to this because, and I, and I was attracted and I, this popped out at me as well as I was going down the list, phonophobia, because, again, if you've li watched any previous episodes, you will know that phonation, phonotactics, all of those things, right, that is related to the sound um, of, you know, like how we produce sound. Um, and as we hover over this, we see um, legri these words, I swear, I practice them. And then my brain is like, are you sure that's how it's pronounced? I'm like, no, no, I'm not. So let's try it again. Ligerophobia or sonophobia. So phono or sono, right? Both of those, Sonos is a very famous headphone brand, right? Because sonar, son, it's a sound. It's a part of that sense. Um, so yes, we have here and phobia is fear, which we did go over, um, a few weeks ago in our Friday the 13th episode. Um, so in that one, we were talking about, um, Triscadelia phobia. I think there's an L in there, you know, it's Trisca something, it's Trisca phobia, uh, for sure. Trisca something phobia, I think, but phobia is fear and it comes from a Greek. I'm pretty sure it just meant fear. Um, and so here we have phonophobia, which is the fear of sound. And so those two were very much the two that popped out at me as the ones that I was like, oh yeah, totally. Those are the ones. So I was here, um, let's see. So here I pulled up mesophone actually. I'm like, I, I switched, I had, Hmm. I'm trying to remember. So how I actually started this research project, it was on Wikipedia, but it was actually on this page. So what I, I can't remember how I ended up on misophonia. Um, I think I searched uh, through DuckDuckGo, something about auditory perception. I think I actually might have even done auditory perception. Anyway, I, I ended up on misophonia. Like I knew I was going to go to Wikipedia and I'm, I was pretty sure like I was going to be looking at this issue and I had an idea about what this issue was. So misophonia jumped out at me as um, the, that's what it was. No. Okay. That's what I'm like. I'm like, I didn't go through DuckDuckGo. I went through I went through my own research, my past research. So what I did was, um, let's see, you can't see this, but that's okay because I will 
bring it into a paid you can see pretty soon so what I did was actually I went to the main page for um, there we go phonetics so and I've pulled this page up before here we go so I went to the main page for phonetics because this is where I generally start my research projects when I'm doing audio um, research in this area phonetics I don't know why I forgot that because that's almost always where I go you know when you're doing a show and you're just like hey um, I forgot everything that I do on a daily basis, you know, that's what happens when all of a sudden you have to like tell somebody else what you do because it's just so like ingrained, you don't think about what you're doing, you just do it. And so having to explain it, it takes another part of your conscious brain and it takes a while for those play those two to make a little bit of a connection to make it easy to explain. This is why teaching is a skill, by the way. Um, doing and teaching are not the same thing. Hence, if you would like to see how somebody learns how to teach through this format, go back through these episodes. It's a doozy. It's a doozy. Okay, so let's go back to um, looking at this fabulous page uh, of phonetics on Wikipedia. So as you can see, um, this is as part of a series. So I generally come to this box. I'm like, okay, I don't really want to actually have to read all of this stuff, but I know that I want to, I want something about phonetics and I want something about, oh, perception. Here we go. Yeah. Let's see about down. Ooh, what's this neuronal encoding of sound? That's what got me first actually. So I, I was, I didn't even start on the, the mesophonia one. I started on the neuronal encoding of sound. I opened that in a new tab, which is right here. Look at that. So I looked here and I was like, okay, yes, this is exactly what I was looking for in terms of the technical term of, you know, how our brains create the um, perception of sound. Then I was like, okay, but I know there's other stuff. So I was, I, I do a little bit of a, you know, let's just, let's just do a little, uh, quick scan of the page and see if there are any other links or any headings that jump out at me. And I'm like, Oh, what is, Ooh, these are neat. Oh, I like all of the graphics. This is actually, um, finding this page. I'm going to totally be using this page. This is going to go in one of my um, absolute regular um, uh, research, you know, reference pockets because I really like this page. So we have, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, you know, like I said, I scan up and down, I get to the bottom and I see if there's anything in the references. So this is actually really interesting that you're probably not even going to be surprised by once I tell you, but um, one of my fellow Lingomers, the um, great Lingthusiasm team, Gretchen McCullough mentioned how she did it, um, not she, I think, I heard about it on Lingthusiasm, but basically if your research paper ends up on Wikipedia, right, your citations just skyrocket they go they because everybody comes here to initially start their research project and so then these this these are the references that become what people think of as the you know preeminent ideas of the field so it's a interesting idea of like how is the field currently being framed in public communications through Wikipedia, right? Um, so that's another subject we can talk about another day. Not something I'm ready to talk about. I'm not in the academic realm, technically. I spent time in it, but it's not at all been my life goal to be part of academia. So um, I'm gonna let, you know, I'll, I'll send it to those who do do that one day. So um, yes, I came down here basically, or, back to the Wikipedia research 
you know, project. How do I research stuff? So we are here at um, the categories. And so I really like coming down here and seeing what category this particular reference page entry entry. Let's think about the old terms in an encyclopedia, right? Because like this is an en this is the entry for neuronal encoding of sound. And because you know this is a an interactive encyclopedia, you can have categories that you can click on and see more um, connections for that particular subject. So here I saw the category auditory perception, and that's where I got to the page where we started. So this is where I started our conversation today because I wanted to sh show you um, this as a way to start if you aren't sure what area you might want to be looking at, right? So here we see uh, the main article for this category is hearing. Actually, I haven't, I haven't uh, opened this one. So <laughs> it's just the, it's just uh, the page for uh, hearing. How do we hear? Which is a great, great um, page to, you know, res to look through because that's the whole point, right? We're, we're talking about hearing. But I like going a little bit deeper because you can find the one-on-ones almost anywhere. So I like talking about, right, the nuances of auditory perception. How do we research the um, way that people develop phobias around certain sounds? Speaking of, let's check that out. So, here we have the web, the um, page for phonophobia, right? Um, now, on this page, as you'll see, I um, I notice that it this is for a particular fear, right? This phonophobia is a fear of loud sound, so it's a very particular fear. Now, uh. The specific, the aversion to specific sounds, misophonia, is the one that I was more familiar with in terms of, you know, the uh, autistic community and how certain sounds uh, trigger not good reactions in our bodies and our systems. And so that's where, that's how I ended up in misophonia. And this is the area that I really wanted to go into, right? So in a research project, right, if I'm going to be creating an, an episode, of, a scripted episode about this kind of topic, which odds are good, you're probably going to see something about this in the future, considering, you know, kind of showing you the behind the scenes of how I create stuff. Um, so this is when I would actually go deep into reading the details, right? Um, and I would see what are the specific areas of this specific area or this specific subject do I want to focus in on? Because, you know, I had a bit of an intro Right, so with talking about the um, season finale, this being the season finale. But for the most part, I've been talking about 20 minutes about how to research a subject, right? So it takes time to uh, we'll do anything. Um, but the ability to explain something in a short period of time takes a lot of time to prepare, right? Shorts, YouTube shorts, taking off from the popularity of TikTok, right? And TikTok being very popular because 
it was like minute long videos, very short videos generally, right? They, that was the point is the videos were super short and they were very informative, right? There was a, it was a format. It is a format that inspires people to create educational content in very fast bits. So if you talk to some of those people, if you, if you actually like, read interviews or, uh, you know, watch interviews or anything like that with the creators of those things, they can tell you it takes a long time to make a one minute video, right? It's, it's, um, it takes time to figure out what specific thing you're trying to convey to your audience. And then it takes time to figure out the best words to use to convey that without confusing your particular audience. So there's a lot of um, crafting in creating educational content uh, that is very short and dense, right? Educational dense without being obscure or without being right uh, confusing that's why these episodes are you know so long and so kind of you know floaty and moran meandering because i mean you know i'm not crafting specifically a focus lesson right i have notes um i talk uh, about random things that pop into my mind. And if you don't have a specific, you know, guideline, it's kind of challenging to create succinct lessons. Unless of course you're, uh, been doing it for years and years and years and you're, it's a second nature, right? That's where the practice comes in, the skill of being a good teacher. So let us uh, continue to research some audio, auditory perception. So we're looking at misophonia right now. And um, as you see here, there are different, uh, you know, subject headings that you can go off on, right? You can talk about um, the people who have these kinds of problems or this kind of issue. You can do, you can look at who is currently in leading the effort at researching it. Stimulus control, let's see what this is about. Um, so this is basically saying that um, it's a stimulus control is a phenomenon where uh, you're trying to modify behavior by becoming numb to the phenomenon. And it's possible that that doesn't always work. So there's a lot of different places you can go even when you have um, a focus right so misophonia you know in one minute easy to t easy to say right you your various sounds make you feel funny but what does that mean what does that funny mean how does it affect somebody's life right so this is what i like to focus in on or for this particular topic right so common triggers include oral sounds, e.g. Br loud breathing, chewing, swallowing, clicking sounds, keyboard tapping, finger tapping, windshield wipers, and sounds associated with movement, fidgeting. Oftentimes, hated sounds are repetitive in nature. Now, um, I'm not sure where you happen to live in this world, but I'm sure that you have experience the frustration of a 
delivery van BB in your vicinity for a bit. That's one of those uh, oral sounds, not oral sounds, repetitive sounds uh, that often triggers a negative reaction in the majority of people, right? You don't have to have a particular condition to have that, you know, what, as I say, flight or fight response, right? This is what a lot of people experience when they hear something that impacts their mental stability. And the beep, beep, beep of a delivery van that um, just decides that they want to put it on as they deliver packages to a hundred uh, room, a hundred, you know, unit building. I mean, if I'm, if it sounds like I'm talking out of personal experience, it's because I am. You know, I live in the city and I live in an area that has many delivery trucks parked on it because it's, we shouldn't go into this. But this is a part of this research project, right? This is part of the reason that it is an interesting subject to me because it's confusing to me that we would design our environment in such a way that we would trigger this response in the majority of people all day long for no reason, right? And the no reason is an exaggeration, right? The beeping exists because there were issues with people being backed up over like a, somebody driving a truck was backing up and they ran over somebody that was standing behind their truck that they didn't see. So because we live in a very victim blamey culture, the, our society or the car manufacturer specifically decided to, in order to avoid, you know, culpability, they would install these beeps on certain sized vehicles so that it would warn people before it crushed them or something. And thus we are stuck with them as at, at this time. So, you know, that means though that we are polluting the our sound environment constantly because we want to make sure this one thing doesn't happen that is very rare nowadays because perhaps because of this intervention but also perhaps because there were regulations that say it's like mirrors had to be at a certain you know thing or there are various other reasons why right people aren't backed up as much um also we could have changed the design of the trucks instead of you know putting a beeping sound we could have made sure that there were more um, angles to be seen, right? But certain solutions cost more and uh, therefore aren't prioritized in our current society. There are a lot of uh, ways, as we could see, this very subject we can go, right? So I can take misophonia, I can take this, this linguistic topic, right? This, um, oh, I mean, and that's the thing, it, misophonia, they relate it, right, to the medical field, not necessarily to linguistics. I'm bringing it into the linguistic field because from my perspective, right, it has to do with the way that we create our reality or create meaning from the sounds in our environment. And so for me, this is a linguistic issue as much as any other um, thing related to how we perceive sound um, and create meaning. Not everybody else, not everybody's going to agree with that. And that is fine. Um, but from this topic, I 
went into the social science realm, right? So no matter where you approach a topic from, you can kind of, it's like a prism, right? You can come out of that idea in so many different ways that there's sort of like an endless opportunity to research an area, to bring your perspective to an issue. And that's really the main point or the main goal I feel of this live stream, right? Linguistics you can use is all about just having a new appreciation and understanding for how we, you know, craft our meaning, how we craft our reality based on the language we use. So, you know, when we are aware of how different people, right, create or how they react to certain sounds, somewhat involuntarily sometimes, right? None of us can be 100% conscious of every aspect of ourselves. As somebody who does a lot of work on self-perception and, um, you know, the therapy trenches, I've been in the therapy trenches, I've done so much of the self-reflection, but even to this day, right, I'm still discovering things about myself that is like, oh, wow, that's why I probably do that interesting I never thought of it that way before right and as I approach 40 I still feel that like you know there are things that happened when I was in my you know maybe 20s that I don't really you know remember and then it's I'm reminded oh that's right that's why I decided to you know take that particular path instead of that path right I'm reminded of a um a fairy a fable of sorts there's a um, has to do it's it's taken many different forms the, the the form that I remember hearing it in was this they there was was a princess who uh, saw a the first bloom of the spring outside the gates of her um, her home right so she goes to her father, the king, and says, oh, I don't want any, I don't want it to be crushed. So can you please, you know, make sure that it's not crushed? And so he, he you know, basically is, uh, says, oh, I will indulge you. You know, I'll post a guard so that nobody, you know, steps on the first flower of the season. And then he just forgets about it, right? And so now this is, this is just now a regular part of the guard's, duties is somebody is supposed to stand at that spot and the reason that that happened that that they're supposed to be there kind of gets lost over time and nobody really goes back and reviews why we did that so that's us all the time right we are always sort of like setting up guards around certain aspects of ourselves and we think we're going to remember why we did that. But then over time, it's going to, it's sort of like, well, um, I mean, I'm doing it. So there must be a reason. And just because I can't remember the reason doesn't mean that I shouldn't keep doing it. So I'm just going to keep doing it because I would rather do it and, you know, not, and hopefully it, it wasn't the doing it is better than the not doing it, right? And that's just us all constantly. So I bring this up now as we are going through this um, misophonia article is because there are many elements that are maybe triggering, triggering us unconsciously, as it were. And I'm actually going to take a moment to talk about that word trigger because in our current society, that term, that word trigger has developed a lot of uh, associations, right? So there is, a, there is a, an overriding sense that I have gotten from people in my life where I've used this term 
in a technical capacity, and they have kind of reacted to it in a uh, cautious manner because at the at this time in our society in the United States that I am currently living in in 2021, trigger has entered the lexicon as the term that is used when somebody is basically unable to control their reaction to a psychological event, right? And that's true, but it was put on a very narrow definition of psychological event, right? So, you know, um, here we see in this article, trigger sounds, right? When I hear certain sounds, my body is triggered to create a certain reaction. It's neither positive nor negative, right? I that that sound could be, you know, the laugh of my niece or nephew, right? And that triggers within me a very positive and happy feeling. But at the same time, I could be listening to garbage trucks working outside my apartment, which is what I am currently listening to. And I apologize if you can hear that at the moment. I live in a city. But that triggers within me a lot of tension, right? I am, I have to remind myself to calm down because the vibrations, the beeping, the, the um, arm, you know, the sound of the metal on metal all jangling together really really makes me tense up. It makes me feel like there's some attack or something that's gonna happen. So I it it triggers me in a certain way. And I have to remind myself that I can consciously relax, but that takes effort. And if I don't know that that is why I am suddenly tense, right? I've done a lot of like I said self reflective work on figuring out what is when my body tenses i've been i've you know sort of started to train myself to figure out oh i'm tense why am i tense let's relax let's figure out what's going on around us right that's not normal that's actually very unnatural because our natural instinct is to do fight or flight or fawn you know or do all these things of like I need to, I'm going to tense, and until I'm sure that I'm safe, I'm not going to untense, because being tense means that I can run away really fast, right? So the unnatural relaxing training is something that most people don't have. And our society, our current culture, we don't aren't trained in that. We aren't taught that as children. It's not a part of our educational curriculum because our forebears didn't really think of it as necessary. They didn't even consider it as a thing, you know? People just were a certain way, temperament and all that. And being able to change yourself was considered only possible if you were incredibly advanced in some way, right? So every year we change how we think of ourselves as people, right? We get more away from the idea that there are vast differences and we see more and more how the similarities are actually what we need to be focusing on. So in this way, right? This is where, I don't know if you noticed, I seem to be really focusing in on. It's this misophonia and the uh, word trigger, right? This seems to be where my research has led me. I, feel, I mean, I've been talking about it for almost the last 20 minutes, right? And if that's the case, if I'm able to be so engaged in this one area of connection, then I can probably make a pretty good scripted video out of it. So, I think you might want to keep an eye out for a video on, you know, maybe trigger or misophonia or something of that nature, right? It does seem like this is going to be the area um, that I'm going to focus on. So, um, wow, 
We have. We did a full 40 minutes of chatting about research. How about that? Let's go ahead and return us and have a little ending uh, from, let's see. Yes, haha. -ha. So, um, I just, it's, I'm, I'm a little bit feeling emotional because I, it's going to be a fun contract. I'm not, you know, I'm excited for the fall project that I'm working on, but I'm also going to miss these uh, Friday morning uh, live streams with you because as you've seen, I can just talk about linguistics for just endless amounts of time, it seems. And uh, I really would love to hear what you would be interested in hearing about, right? Um, are you thinking that uh, a particular word jumped out at you that you would want to see a video for potentially? Let me know. Emails in the description box. And uh, yeah, that's all the linguistics you can use for this year. Oh, uh, I hope that these last uh, few months have helped you have a more nuanced appreciation for language and that that appreciation can be passed on to your circles as you have fun crafting sound meanings. See you soon.